Hey everybody, and welcome once again to Nose in the Book, a Bible reading commentary with me, your host, Pastor Justin Van Reed. So great to have you with me once again as we take a look at six more chapters from the Word of God. We have before us today in our reading from 2 Kings chapter 18. Uh, we're going to do the entire book of Philemon today, the whole thing. Uh, also, Hosea chapter 11. And then from Psalms, we'll look at Psalm 132, 133, and 134. If you have any questions or comments on these chapters, please feel free to post anything in the comment section below. Uh, otherwise, let's consider what we've got before us in the text. First off, 2 Kings chapter 18. This is following the fall of Samaria, the northern kingdom Israel. Uh, so the attention now is going to focus on Judah, the southern kingdom. And so here we read of a good king who comes to reign over Judah, and his name is Hezekiah. And Hezekiah is going to reign in Jerusalem 29 years old. As I said, he does what is pleasing in the Lord's sight. He removes the uh, pagan worship sites and gets rid of the idols and um, even gets rid of the bronze serpent that Moses had made because that had even become an object of idolatry. Um, it says in verse 5, in fact, Hezekiah trusted in the Lord. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before or after his time. He remained faithful to the Lord in everything, and he carefully obeyed all the commands the Lord had given Moses. And so the Lord was with him, and Hezekiah was successful in everything he did. Unlike his uh, predecessors, he refuses to pay any tribute to the king of Assyria, and, uh, and so we read here, beginning in verse 13, that in the 14th year of Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, comes to attack Judah and uh, Jerusalem. And um, King uh, Hezekiah, at this point, sends a message to the king of Assyria, uh, saying that now he will change his mind, he will uh, pay tribute if he'll withdraw. But the uh, king of Assyria demands um, this large amount of money. And so uh, Hezekiah um, uses, as it says here, all the silver stored in the temple of the Lord and in the palace treasury and even strips gold from the door of the Lord's temple um, and gives it all to the Assyrian king. And yet, nevertheless, the king of Assyria comes with his uh, commanders and uh, chief of staff and a huge army to Jerusalem. And uh, it says that the uh, Assyrians here, um, the, the, the Assyrian uh, chief of staff uh, gives a message to Hezekiah. Basically, he's going to taunt the Lord and, um, and saying, you know, who is this, the, the Lord? You know, you're going to say we're trusting in the Lord our God, but isn't he the one who insulted Hezekiah? Right, because remember, Hezekiah tore down the pagan altars. They confuse uh, the issue here and think that oh, they must be all idols or uh, you know altars of the Lord Yahweh, the God of Israel. But of course, that wasn't the case. So uh, this message is sent um, to uh, Hezekiah, and um, the Israelites uh, in Jerusalem. Um, like uh, basically Hezekiah's uh, cabinet, says, uh, speak to us in Aramaic. We understand it. Don't speak in Hebrew for the people on the wall will hear. In other words, we don't want the regular people to hear the threats that the Assyrians are making. And uh, this chief of staff of Sennacherib, he comes back with, uh, no, I'm going to speak loud and clear for everyone to hear in the language they understand. They will be so hungry and thirsty, they will eat their own dung and drink their own urine. And, um, and then he goes on to say, Don't let Hezekiah deceive you. He'll never be able to rescue you from my power. Don't let him fool you into trusting in the Lord, saying the Lord will rescue us. Uh, he goes on to talk about how, Has any God stopped the king of Assyria? Right, The gods of all these places that they've, capped, that they've conquered? Did any God rescue Samaria, northern kingdom? What God of any nation has ever been able to save its people from my power? So what makes you think the Lord can rescue Jerusalem? And um, Hezekiah says, don't answer. 
And, uh, and so they are mourning here and wondering what to do, what's coming next. All right, let's go to the book of Philemon. And obviously, um, just one chapter, which is why I said we'll do the whole book of Philemon in just one day here, because it is just, this is a very short letter that Paul writes to Philemon about this former slave named Onesimus. And he's appealing to Philemon that apparently this Onesimus had previously uh, been uh, uh, a slave of Philemon's and Philemon and, and then had run away and that it had then found Jesus came to faith in Jesus and so now as a, as a follower of Christ Paul's uh, sending him back it's the right thing to do uh, but also really pressuring Philemon here to release Onesimus um, so he says in verse 10, I appeal to you to show kindness to my child Onesimus. This is Paul writing to Philemon. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. And Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past, but now he's very useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you with my own heart. He says, I didn't want to do anything without your consent. I wanted you to help because you were willing, not because you were forced he says, he's no longer a slave to you. He's more than a slave. Now he's a brother in Christ. And he says, so if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he's wronged you in any way, charge it to me. Paul says this. He says, please do me this favor for the Lord's sake. Give me this encouragement in Christ. And he says, I am confident as I write this, you will do what I ask and even more. So a bit of uh, putting the pressure on Philemon here. To do what is right and release Onesimus, who's now a believer in Jesus. All right, we come next to Hosea chapter 11. And uh, this verse, the chapter actually starts with a verse that's quoted in the New Testament, uh, in, you know, applied to Jesus. Israel being here pictured as God's son. Of course, Jesus is God's son. So there's the overlap. But we have here, when Israel was a child, I loved him and I called my son out of Egypt. Speaking, of course, of the Exodus. But he says, the more I called to him, the farther he moved from me. He offered sacrifices to the images of Baal and burned incense to idols. He says, you know, I was good. He describes here how he was gracious to Israel, but his people uh, have turned away from him. And, um, and so as a result, this judgment came upon them. because He says, my people are determined to desert me. They call me the most high, but they don't truly know me. And yet, Here's what he says. How can I give you up, Israel? How can I let you go? How could I destroy you? My compassion overflows. He says, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel. For I'm God and not a mere mortal. I am the Holy One living among you and I will not come to destroy you. For someday the people will follow me. I will roar like a lion and when I roar, my people will return trembling. And so here's the heart of God here for his people. Faithful, good to his people. Even though, as we've read throughout Hosea, Israel has been faithless, has turned away from him again and again throughout their history. And yet God says, I will not utterly destroy you. I love you. I created you. I made you. I called you. And I will keep you. I know that you will return to me. All right. Psalm 132 then here. Still on our uh, Psalms of uh, Ascent for the pilgrims going to Jerusalem. Uh, here this uh, Psalm talks about uh, some things that have... Uh, have happened in the past in the days of uh, of David. Starts off, Lord, remember David and all that he suffered. Goes on to talk about, you know, the house built for the Lord. And then he says, we heard the ark was in Ephrathah. Then we found in the distant countryside of Jaar. So let us go to the sanctuary of the Lord. Let us worship at the footstool of his throne. Arise, O Lord, enter your resting place, along with the ark, the symbol of your power. Um, he goes on to say, the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. He has desired it for his home. This is my resting place forever. I will live here for this is the home I desired. So speaking here of, uh, you know, the establishing uh, during David of the uh, ark in, you know, the Lord's presence there with the ark in Jerusalem and then the temple that Solomon built. Uh, psalm 133, uh, just a short three verse psalm here, another psalm of ascent. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony, for harmony is as precious as the anointing oil poured over Aaron's head, runs down his beard and onto the border of his robe. So, uh, beautiful thing. Unity, harmony, living together like that. And then last, Psalm 134, another short song of uh, ascent. 
Oh, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who serve at night in the house of the Lord. Lift your hands toward the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Jerusalem. All right, that's all we have time for today. Again, we had 2 Kings chapter 18, Philemon, Hosea 11, Psalm 132, 133, and 134. I uh, hope you enjoy your time in the Lord's Word today. Until next time, keep your eyes on the Lord and your nose in the book. We'll see you again soon.